Jang approached the manager's body and gazed at it. He was unable to accept he had, at last, won. All of a sudden, a framework window sprung up to compliment him for stepping up. Now he was at level 14, with a power rating of 127 stars. His uninvolved capacities and level-up impacts were as yet dynamic. Jang grasped his clenched fist, which started to gleam. Peering down at it with a grin, he thought about how his solidarity continued to develop as his level expanded. With 127 stars, his battle power was practically equivalent to that of a level 25 expert in the battle class. He started to turn his head back, imagining that now he simply had to gobble up the beast carcasses to acquire eating up points. Perceiving how strong Jang was and sensing the force of the mother bug, the little insects began to escape. These savvy beasts realized they got no opportunity of overcoming Jang. He turned his head and saw the little insects escaping. Realizing there could have been now no threat, it quickly became clear that the bugs understood the situation and were getting away. Although he wanted to kill them for points, he ruled against it, as the main task now was to start rearing bugs. He began walking towards the beast cadavers, and bit by bit, Minimal Nine started to show up through the toxic fog with a lethal look. Jang gazed at the supervisor's body, gripped his clenched fist tightly, lifted his other hand towards the sky, and told Minimal Nine that it was now hers. When she heard this, she thanked him and changed back to her regular form. She opened her mouth, jumped, and pushed toward the manager's carcass. She started eating it up, and a framework window appeared, giving him 600 gobbling up points. As Minimal Nine partook in her feast, Jang went to the side with a serious look, imagining that elite beasts like this supervisor were different because they offered a high eating up benefit. He quickly presumed that hunting and rapidly rearing the bug swarm was an effective method for becoming more robust and chasing more elite beasts. Minutes later, another framework window appeared, showing that his gobbling up value was full. The framework inquired if he wanted to start the bug rearing. Jang took a gander at the framework window and was flabbergasted to see how quickly the gobbling up value had topped off. He soon realized that elite beasts gave many more points than normal ones. After a few moments, Minimal Nine returned to her human form. She stooped before him, putting one hand on her knee and the other on the ground. Then, she bowed her head before him and told him that Little Nine was already ready to duplicate. She requested permission to keep going with him with much stronger power. While Jang's body discharged a solid air, he turned his head aside and stayed quiet for a few seconds, daydreaming. He turned his head towards her, grinning as he concluded the time had come to begin rearing the bugs. All of a sudden, a framework window appeared, informing him that Little Nine had already started the first generation of mass bug reproducing. Jang's and Little Nine's bodies began to emanate a wave of energy. The framework informed him that the accelerated development of gifts and the gift of the development of all things were active. With a serious demeanor, Jang began to take a gander at Minimal Nine, thinking to himself that his detached skills were more effective for accelerating bug rearing after a few moments, the mark of Minimal Nine showed up on his hand. Seeing this, he quickly acknowledged it was a new capacity. His supposition was correct, as a scenario window appeared, granting him two new elite capacities called Bug Home and Territory. Then, another framework window appeared, informing him that the bug rearing had been advanced rapidly, with eight seconds remaining. Seeing this, Jang realized that the bug rearing was almost finished. He lifted his head towards the sky, and what he found before him stunned him. He couldn't resist the opportunity to be astonished and keep thinking about whether this was a settlement of bugs. Before him stood Minimal Nine, with two hands stretched out to the sides. Reproducing itself in a moment, a great many bugs appeared and began zooming around them. The framework praised Jang for effectively finishing the rearing of the primary multitude of bugs. According to the framework, there were a total of 2300 bugs. Jung turned his head aside, noticing the bugs happily, as he felt that the quantity was genuinely noteworthy. He could hardly imagine that the primary rearing pattern of the bugs had produced over 2,000 offspring, and this was only the original. He considered what might occur in the third or fourth generation. One of the bugs moved toward Jang. Sensing its presence, he turned towards it and began to stroke its head. He had an affection for these bugs. Anyway, their capacities differed from little nines. He saw that the bugs had also gained a few new skills. The bug status window appeared, named Child of Nine, Wings of Miasma, flaunting four capacities. The first was Toxic Fog, enabling it to erode and eat up all that it contacted. The second capacity was Disguise, enabling it to blend in by mirroring its wings. The third capacity, Fuhrer, ceaselessly consumed the gobbling up value, briefly supporting strength and speed. The fourth and last capacity was called Implosion. This capacity enabled it to explode its body, 
releasing toxins and causing massive damage in the process. Jang found the cover and implosion skills very useful. While out to lunch, Minimal Nine moved toward him from behind and embraced him. Closing her eyes, she grinned, catching his attention. Hearing her voice, Jang woke up from his daze, turning his head slightly towards her with a grin. Feeling calm, he moved his body towards her gently, stroking her head, and thought with a smile that she seemed to have changed, yet not much. Minimal Nine closed her eyes, put her hands on her chest, and, with a blissful grin, informed him that she had finished the process of rearing the bugs. Then, she took Jang's arm with two hands and expressed her desire to rest. Hearing this, he asked her what she meant by resting. At that point, her body began to vanish. Jang turned his head slightly towards his hand, feeling somewhat confused as he wondered where she had gone. At that moment, a framework window appeared, informing him that Little Nine had returned to the bug home. Jang saw his hand, couldn't resist the opportunity to smile, and felt relieved. The framework space was extraordinary. It could accommodate multitudes of bugs. Now the number of multitudes didn't matter. They could all hide inside the framework, so Jang would no longer fear being found by anyone. The bug home was a new capacity he had obtained, granted at maximum level, meaning it couldn't be stepped up. Jang activated Minimal Nine's mark, saw his hand, and saw that she was calmly sleeping. He recognized that after recreating, bugs needed to rest. Jang recalled his recently acquired capacity called Domain and decided to test it to see how it worked. He stretched out his hand aside and activated the skill. In a flash, his body emitted a strong and choking energy, and his eyes began to sparkle. When Jang activated the capacity, the bugs close by turned their heads towards him, fixing him with a deadly look. Jang responded with a lethal look. Understanding how the capacity worked, he extended his hand towards the sky, and it began to absorb the bugs. This new capacity enabled Jang to control the multitude of bugs. He turned his head towards his hand and realized that using this skill was as simple as moving an arc. With his eyes sparkling, Jang ahead searched in surprise. Through this capacity, he could also tap into the feelings of the bugs. Now, Jang could see the world as bugs did. Looking around, he saw the place teeming with beasts, hidden and ready to follow their prey. Jang turned his head aside, noticing the behavior of the bugs, couldn't resist the opportunity to smile. He realized they were also excited. With a determined look, Jang and the bugs focused on the beasts surrounded by Minimal Nine's toxic fog. Jang ordered them to go after testing their new capacities. Hearing his command, numerous bugs destroyed a nearby building into pieces, getting the attention of the multitude of beasts in the space. Their arrangement worked, drawing the attention of the multitude of beasts nearby. They turned their heads towards the source and slowly started approaching to investigate. Jang decided not to wait any longer and pursued the beasts surrounded by Minimal Nine's noxious fog. He advanced towards the beasts, who soon realized what was about to happen. They attempted to escape, but it was already too late. Just as they prepared to escape, the toxic fog quickly surrounded them. Within seconds, the fog wrapped the beasts, gradually consuming their bodies and causing massive pain. After a short time, all the affected beasts succumbed to the poison and collapsed to the ground. With the beasts now expired, the toxic fog began to consume their bodies slowly. Jang approached the cadavers and examined them closely. With the multitude of bugs, he scarcely needed to take action himself. The range of the toxic fog had extended significantly, gobbling up its targets more quickly and widely. Also, he now had shared vision through the capacity called Domain. Normal beasts could no longer hide from the multitude of bugs. Jang turned his head to the side, noticing Little Nine's toxic fog slowly consuming the beast cadavers. A grin formed on his face as he realized that soon he would be able to raise more bugs. He recalled that he hadn't checked how much gobbling up value was needed for the next bug rearing. With this in mind, he opened the framework window. After seeing what had appeared on the framework interface, Jang was stunned and began to contemplate what was happening and what it meant. Simultaneously, a man showed up at a neglected stockroom close to where Jang was. He illuminated his chief that he had returned. Seeing him back, the pioneer inquired as to why he had taken such a long time and requested him to quickly cover what was occurring in the bug's home. The man, hooded and with green hair, was visibly frightened. He informed his chief that the bug's home had been destroyed by someone strange and unknown. The obliteration was complete to the point that not a single beast was left alive. His superior, a tall man with meshes, couldn't believe what he was hearing. He gazed in dismay, trying to fathom the extent of the situation. He turned his head towards his subordinate and, with an astonished look, asked if this was some sort of joke. He could hardly imagine that someone had completely demolished the bug's home. Another man standing nearby moved toward them, 
and after hearing this, was stunned. The man with green hair stepped closer and, with a serious demeanor, confirmed that it was true, adding that the City of Beasts was in ruins. After hearing this, their chief put his hand on his chin and gazed at the ground, unable to believe the home had been burnt up. It was too terrifying to grasp at first. He contemplated whether the Night Watch could be responsible, but quickly dismissed the thought, knowing it wasn't their style. He presumed that the party in question must be a secretive operation coordinated by a surreptitious family or an impressive attack group. Concluding that retreat was the most prudent strategy, he couldn't help but feel frustrated. They had been tasked with the significant mission of gathering toxin from a wolf bug. With their mission failed, he set out to recover their losses on the journey back by preying on unsuspecting victims. The man adjacent to him, after hearing this plan, turned towards him, his temple wrinkling with sweat and panic. As they spoke, the door of the unwanted distribution center squeaked open. Surprised by the sound, the triplet quickly turned their heads, and the man with green hair revealed to the others that they had an unexpected visitor. After hearing this, curiosity swirled within them, considering the identity of this newcomer. A man approached the door, placing his hand on it, and as it squeaked open, he revealed that he had stumbled upon individual experts. Charmed, the pioneer asked about his identity. The newbie introduced himself as Jang. Stepping into the stockroom with measured steps, he moved toward them, extending his hand in a token of peace, assuring them not to worry as his only purpose in coming was to enhance their abilities. He also mentioned that he had brought food to trade. After hearing this, their chief felt a wave of relief, knowing that Jang had arrived unaccompanied. Turning towards him, he stared at Jang and, with a grin, consented to the trade, noting that food in the desert came at a high price. After his comment, he asked about what Jang wished to trade. The demeanor of the man next to him shifted drastically. He assumed an aggressive stance, fixing a harsh look on Jang. Undeterred, Jang approached the pioneer and met his gaze, reassuring him with a smile not to be concerned, mentioning he had valuable items for trade. At this, the man's demeanor underwent another intense change. He cast his gaze upon Jang, a smile pulling at his lips as curiosity peaked within him regarding what Jang planned to trade. The pioneer directed Jang to reveal his offerings. Right then and there, the two men surrounded Jang, drawing their blades with smiles on their faces. Jang simply turned his head slightly towards them, unable to suppress his own smile. From the beginning, he had doubts about their reliability. Without hesitation, he activated the ring, extending his hand toward them. In an instant, numerous insects emerged from the ring, their piercing look fixed upon the men. Jang turned away from them, his voice touched with irony as he asked about the nature of his product. After encountering the insects, the men hurriedly returned their swords to their sheaths, taking several steps back while remaining fully on guard. Their looks focused on the insects, beads of sweat forming on their temples as fear gripped them. They recognized the creatures as wolf insects, prompting them to question whether these arachnids had somehow survived the annihilation of the bug's home. Pondering this, they speculated whether Jang had been the one to eliminate the insects. Jang's current level stood at 17. He subtly moved his gaze towards them, fixing them with an intense stare. With a grin, he assured them he was well aware of their suspicions. Following his explanation, Jang settled onto a nearby rock, tilting his head slightly towards them as he calmly revealed his growing resentment, urging them to arm themselves and leave quickly. He made his dissatisfaction known. After hearing his words, the three men quickly gathered their possessions, turned away from Jang, and fled, expressing apologies for the disturbance and affirming their swift departure. Several minutes had passed since the men had fled the distribution center. Jang extended his hand to the side, releasing Little Nin's poisonous fog, instructing the bugs to emerge. Jang remained seated on the rock, one arm casually resting on his knee. With a swift motion, he directed the poisonous fog to produce two bugs. The bugs soared around Jang, their eyes gleaming with lethal intent as they scanned for potential threats. Meanwhile, Jang took a sip of the soup left behind by the men, feeling the pangs of hunger intensify. Pondering his decision to acquire Little Nine, he realized he hadn't anticipated the side effects of leading the swarm of bugs. As Jang sipped the soup, a framework window emerged, and his gobbling up value surged, now standing at 2768 points out of 1 million. The framework urged him to increase this value promptly. Initially, he had expected a faster increase in the gobbling up value once the bug swarm multiplied. However, he hadn't foreseen that the gobbling up value of the subsequent multiplication would also double. This development posed a significant challenge for Jang, as the gobbling up value a boss could offer now seemed negligible. Even clearing out all the monster homes outside the city wouldn't suffice to replenish the gobbling up value for the next propagation. 
Jang cast his gaze downwards, lost in analysis. He had been informed that the monster homes and secret domains under Nightwatch's control would remain undisclosed. This implied that to increase his swarm's gobbling up value, he needed to conform to the Nightwatch's directives. He looked at his hand, seeing that Little Nine had yet to awaken. Seeing this, he quickly realized the profound responsibility of propagation. Unexpectedly, he sensed another's presence. His demeanor shifted abruptly as he turned his head sharply, questioning the intruder's purpose. Rising to his feet, he clenched his fist tightly, tilting his head slightly and assuming a defensive stance. The scent of conflict filled the space, accompanied by the sound of many people in pursuit. Confused by the situation and the reason behind the girl's pursuit, Jang remained uncertain of what was unfolding. Moments later, a girl concealed by an invisibility spell stumbled into the warehouse, colliding with Jang before falling to the ground. It was the same girl from earlier. Using one hand to brace herself against the floor, she carefully touched her head, wincing in pain. Jang observed her, his expression a mixture of confusion and curiosity, pondering the unexpected reunion. Meanwhile, as the girl lay on the ground, she placed one hand on the floor for support, the other resting on her chest. Lifting her head to meet Jang's gaze, she immediately recognized him as the boy she had encountered at the bug's home. She looked at him with fear in her eyes, pleading for secrecy about her presence. Jang, shocked by her request, turned to her with a surprised expression. She had been near him, yet he hadn't detected her presence at all. It took him a moment to realize that the person being pursued by the man with blue hair was determined to accompany the girl to safety. He sensed another presence nearby. Quickly, he turned his head towards the warehouse entrance, his demeanor turning serious as he realized it could already be too late to withdraw. Minutes later, a group of people entered the warehouse, including young Tai and the man with blue hair from the Zio family. They advanced towards Jang, and it didn't take long for young Tai to recognize him. A sense of dread and concern washed over him. Pointing a shaking finger at Jang, he informed his chief that Jang was the same person they had encountered previously. The man with blue hair casually slipped his hand into his jeans pocket, fixing his look on Jang with a smile. He praised his subordinate for their sharp sense of smell. Meanwhile, Jang resumed his seat on the rock, his hands resting on his knees, maintaining a calm demeanor. Upon closer inspection, the man realized that the area was devoid of others and Jang was indeed camping alone. With a glare fuming with anger, Yung Tai focused on Jang, demanding to know if a girl had recently entered the warehouse. He insisted on an immediate response, threatening severe consequences if Jang delayed. Sensing the tension, the man with blue hair intervened, placing his hand in front of Yung Tai and, with a smile, asked him to hold off for a moment. Approaching Jang, he settled onto the stone opposite him. Aware that Jang belonged to the deep expert class, he noted how quickly Jang had advanced in levels. Less than a day had passed since their last encounter, yet Jang had already reached. Level 16. The man's curiosity in Jang grew with each passing moment. Deciding to postpone the discussion for now, he declared that he had pressing matters to attend to. As Jang maintained his calm while seated on the stone, the man laid an arm on his knee, drew his blade, and pointed it at Jang's neck with a harsh expression. Curious if Jang had seen a girl with black hair nearby, he awaited a response as his subordinates approached and stood behind him in silence. Jang remained composed, meeting the man's gaze. Jang quickly assessed the aura surrounding him, concluding that his level exceeded 30. Realizing the man's ability to accurately recognize his class and level, Jang hypothesized that he likely had specific detection equipment. Jang gestured towards the back door of the warehouse, explaining to the man that he had noticed a shadow moving that way. However, due to not having the keen class, he couldn't confirm if it was the person they sought. After hearing Jang's explanation, the man rose to his feet warily, choosing to trust him. He also warned Jang to be more forthcoming in the future. Jang, somewhat surprised by the advice, stood up as well. Facing away from Jang, the man tilted his head slightly to glance back at him. With a threatening glare, he warned Jang that if he found any assistance given to the girl, the Zio family would not ignore it. After hearing this, Yong Taiyi turned his head slightly towards Jang, unable to suppress a smile. A few seconds later, the man and his subordinates began to withdraw from the warehouse. Jang moved his body to face them, observing their steady retreat as they faded from view. He recalled that the Zio family held the most power in Genu. Fixing his look on the man with blue hair, he pondered the extensive history of the clans in the city, all of which held positions as feudal lords. These clans were shrouded in mystery and rarely intervened in mundane matters unless faced with significant catastrophe. 
Some of their most powerful members were said to have abilities capable of altering the very fabric of the sky and the earth. This man had greater power than Jang had anticipated, a realization that unsettled him. Being remembered by a person of such influence wasn't advantageous. After a few moments, Jang looked towards the warehouse exit and saw that the men had left. Recognizing that lingering in this spot was unwise, he decided to leave as well. Rising from her hiding spot, the girl approached Jang, placing her hands on her hips as she expressed gratitude for his rescue. Jang rose to his feet, facing her without saying a word. Suddenly, seizing her arm, Jang's action startled the girl, who grew anxious about his intentions. Jang stepped closer, fixing her with an intense gaze and accusing her of nearly misleading him again, just as she had done before. Having helped her again, Jang inquired about her predicament with those individuals. With Jang in such proximity, she couldn't help but blush, meeting his gaze as she revealed her family's enormous debt. She continued to explain that the man intended to seize the goods they were transporting and kill them all, but he hadn't expected her escape. Fearing the possibility of the news leaking out, he had pursued her for this very reason. After clarifying her situation, she questioned Jang about his intentions to silence her. After hearing her words, Jang released her hand, turned away, and started to walk in the opposite direction. Observing his departure, she placed a hand over her chest, feeling a mix of emotions. Extending her hand towards him, she offered her eternal gratitude for his help and promised to repay his kindness in the future. As he withdrew from her, he closed his eyes, fists clenched tightly, and firmly expressed his reluctance to become entangled in her issues. Suddenly, pausing, Jang's eyes snapped open as a sense of unease washed over him. The girl too sensed the shift, and her expression turned fearful. With apprehension, she informed him that a barrier spell had been cast around the warehouse. All of a sudden, a voice from outside the warehouse instructed their subordinates to emerge. Jang turned his gaze towards the warehouse entrance, realizing that escape was now impossible, aware that even if the girl denied knowing him, they would no longer believe her. He activated his bug insight ability. As he moved around the area, he quickly observed that they were completely surrounded. With a determined expression, Jang fixed his gaze on the warehouse entrance, ready to confront any foe. On the opposite side, the girl grew fearful, clutching her chest with shaking hands. Moments later, the man with blue hair and his subordinates emerged, their presence exuding a palpable aura of danger. Fixing a piercing look on Jang, they prepared to deliver the final blow. Sensing Jang's deception, one of them advanced, staring at him and demanding that he surrender the girl.